From Washington, this is VOA News. More clashes in Cairo, a new baby for Britain's royal couple. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. Egypt's interim president is urging people to remain calm and abstain from violence in the aftermath of a new round of deadly clashes in Cairo. Adli Mansour spoke on state television late Monday telling Egyptians reconciliation is needed for the country to move ahead. His comments came after new clashes erupted in Cairo between supporters and opponents of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. Four people were reported killed and dozens more were wounded. Mr. Morsi's family, meanwhile, is accusing the military of kidnapping him. VOA's Elizabeth Arad explains. Mr. Morsi's daughter read out a statement by relatives of the detained leader, saying they're bringing Egyptian and international legal action against the military. In the first remarks by the family since Mr. Morsi was detained July 3rd, Shema Morsi named Armed Forces Chief Abdel Fattah al-Sisi as the leader of what they described as a bloody military coup and implicated other members of what they called his Purchase Group. Mr. Morsi's son, Osama, described his detention as an abduction. Several nations have called on the military to release him. Elizabeth Arad, VOA News, Cairo. Syria's rebels say they're making gains in the country's north just a day after taking heavy losses near the capital, Damascus. The Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says that rebel forces captured the village of Khan al-Asl on the outskirts of Aleppo. Skirmishes continue near the village, and there have been reports of airstrikes by the Syrian military. Iraqi militants using suicide bombers and mortar rounds staged coordinated attacks on two prisons, possibly freeing hundreds of prisoners, including senior terrorist leaders. Iraqi officials say at least 25 guards were killed in the assaults in the high-security prisons of Abu Ghraib and Taji on the outskirts of Baghdad. It began late Sunday and be continued into Monday. The European Union put Hezbollah's military wing on its list of terrorist organizations. The move underscores EU concern about Hezbollah's role in a bombing attack last year in Bulgaria. Lisa Bryant has details from Paris. Monday's decision by the European Union foreign ministers targets only the military wing of Hezbollah, which is also Lebanon's most powerful political party. EU foreign policy chief Catherine Ashton said the bloc would review the terrorist designation every six months. That does not prevent the continuation of dialogue with all political parties in Lebanon. We also agreed that the delivery of legitimate financial transfers to Lebanon and delivery of assistance from the European Union and its member states will not be affected. Blacklisting Hezbollah allows EU members to freeze the group's assets in Europe, and it might also include travel bans for individuals. Lisa Bryant for VOA News, Paris. The United States is endorsing the EU action. Here's White House spokesman Jay Carney. This designation will have a significant impact on Hezbollah's ability to operate freely in Europe by enabling European law enforcement agencies to crack down on Hezbollah's fundraising, logistical activity, and terrorist plotting on European soil. White House spokesman Jay Carney. Chinese state media say emergency personnel are rushing to reach a northwestern region hit by a strong earthquake, killing at least 89 people. Landslides are hampering disaster efforts. The U.S. Geological Survey says the magnitude 5.9 quake struck early Monday in mountainous Gansu province. A second quake measuring 5.6 shook the area about 90 minutes later, while hundreds of aftershocks followed. It's a baby boy for the British royals. Prince William's wife Kate gave birth to the couple's first child and the new heir to the British throne Monday afternoon. Kensington Palace says the boy weighs 3.8 kilograms. Mother and daughter are doing well, according to the palace, and they will remain hospitalized overnight. 
The child will displace Prince Harry as third in the line to the British throne after Queen Elizabeth's eldest, Prince Charles, and his son, Prince William. Tens of thousands of cheering faithful greeted Pope Francis Monday on his arrival in Brazil, mobbing a motorcade carrying him into central Rio de Janeiro at the start of a week-long visit. This trip is the first by the Argentine-born 76-year-old Pope since he became head of the Roman Catholic Church in March. The visit to Rio and the return to his home continent is set to coincide with Thursday's international celebration of World Youth Day. More than one million young Catholics are expected to participate in the events. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. These and other stories on our website at voanews.com.